So uh, tonight, for in the next 10 minutes, uh, I'm going to introduce you to quickly, <coughs> sorry, quickly to our company, which is called Baphomite Games. Um, but uh, mainly, I want to show you the game that we have developed. As Lorenzo said already, it's a location-based game. And I also want to, because we have published the first version of this game already in 2012, and working on a second version right now that we're going to publish in June. I also want to um, share some lessons learned with you since you're also interested in game developing and also have developed your own games already. So to start with, we are a game studio focusing on mobile games uh, located here in Berlin. Um, we first met in 2011. Um, back then we had the plan to develop the game that entertains people in the city uh, while they explore the city or while they commute. Um, so this was the original idea that we have had. And we ended up developing a smartphone game that we published um, back in 2012. Um, for us it was more or less a beta version just to test the concept to see whether people like it or not. Um, but based on this yeah, first version and on uh, with the experiences and the downloads we have had with this game, um, we basically got an investor um, early 2013 and this is also something I would like to share with you um, since you're probably also um, are looking for um, yeah, financing for your games or uh, interested in how you can finance your games. Um, this is the way that, um, yeah, that we did. Uh, we got it uh, accepted in the spring 2013 with this game um, by game founders. Um, have Everyone heard of it? No? Okay. So uh, Game Founders is basically an accelerator program, um, but that is, they are, that is focusing on games only. It's the only one in Europe. Uh, you can check out their website, gamefounders.com. Um, they offer three month long programs where you basically um, yeah, working full time at their um, place uh, in Tallinn. This is what we did with our team last, last spring. In addition, you get some um, financial support um, and in exchange you give up some equity. This is how it works with investors. Um, but they also have a huge uh, network of mentors that helped us to basically analyze the game, uh, help us to come up with new ideas, to overcome some, some, prob some problems, uh, come up with a new strategy and so on. So it was quite helpful for us and uh, if you have uh, questions about it, um, let's talk to me and I can help you and maybe it could give you an intro to the, to the people that are running this program. Um, so now back to our game. Um, it's called Spy Day. Um, the, as I said, it is the idea to design this game was to entertain people while they are moving in the city. And what we did, or what we tried to do, is um, to bring the entertainment to the places where the people already are and where they are uh, yeah, are bored, so to say. Um, we're doing this by placing the spots at every public transportation um, stop. So um, the, the, basically the public transportation network is our um, yeah, board, so to say, uh, where you can play the game. And in addition, we wanted to give the people um, entertaining rewards at each of those spots. Um, and plus, plus a strategy game, basically. I will talk about it, how it works now. So the call is basically, as you can see here on the screenshot, um, when you're close enough to one of those stops, bus stop or train station, um, you are able to check in, um, which then brings you, or that gives you a mini game, and the mini games are small quizzes, like Hangman or multiple choice quizzes. Um, that you can play while you're waiting for the bus or while you're maybe in the bus and going to the next station. And by solving those mini games correctly, basically gain points or uh, and an additional experience, point, experience points. So this is the core loop. And as I said in addition, we added a strategy level. And this works story-wise that uh, all players um, are agents that control a team of five virtual spies that you can, like in the well-known board game Monopoly, place at those spots where you have successfully solved the minigames. 
So, for instance, when I have been to Alexanderplatz and collected a minigame there and solved it, then I have the chance to place one of my virtual spies at this spot and basically steal half of the points from all other players um, that are also playing, playing at Alexanderplatz. Um, this is the retention loop that we added in order to make sure that the game is not only fun like for an hour or for two hours, but gives you our, makes you come back uh, every day when you go to work, come back, go and visit your friends, and so on. Um, in addition, of course, um, you can train your spies, so you can send them to boot camps to uh, increase their strength, to make them, make them stronger, um, since the other players, of course, can try to fight you back. Um, so once, I mean, once occupy the spot, it doesn't mean that you're going to have it forever. Uh, the other players, of course, try to um, yeah, compete with you, and so um, if you have stronger spies, the possibility um, is higher that you basically win against them. Um, in addition, you can equip them, um, you can buy them new dresses, and so on. Which actually leads to the next um, slide, how do we monetize it? Um, as you can imagine, uh, it's free to play, so we use the well-known inner purchases um, where players can spend small amount of money, a uh, small amount of money for, yeah, for instance, for special customizations or for certain time keys. So, uh, if you don't want to wait for two hours until your spy comes back from the boot camp, you can also pay. And this is the one, um, one part of our monetization model. The second is that we offer this kind of location-based game to the public transportation service providers um, as a location-based marketing platform. We already ran, or ran a campaign last year with the largest one uh, in Germany, um, where we put, in addition to the spots that are already integrated, we put the logos of this company on the map, and um, by collecting these logos, the players could uh, win uh, additional prices, like real, price, real prices. Uh, and this company basically paid us for, for using this game. So there are also other ways to, to monetize your game um, if inner purchases, uh, in in purchases are not enough. And we have a couple of more of these campaigns probably this year. Um, yeah, as I said, I would like um, to share some of our lessons learned, some of the stuff that we, um, yeah, some of our mistakes we've made, um, but because when we put we first started to develop the game, um, we haven't had that many experiences with it. So of course there are a lot of mistakes and this is also the reason why we're now currently developing uh, the new version um, that you can uh, playtest later on. So first of all, um, free to play is nice. Um, you, you basically offer your game to the people for free, they can download it for free, they can install it for free, but what we did, uh, we asked them to register straight away. Um, which is also, I mean, which, which actually led to a huge um, drop down on, on registrations on users. So we had a lot of more downloads than actually uh, registrations. Um, this is something, uh, or I would recommend, or this is something that we try to do is to come up with smarter ideas than just ask immediately um, for for passwords and email addresses and stuff. Um, if you have any. If you don't have to do it, um, I think there are better ways to do it and to, don't, to, don't, to do not leave, uh, lose too many people right at the beginning. Um, second is that, um, at least from our experiences, players do not read at all, which means that if you have some features or functionalities that need explanation, uh, just, I mean, you can use texts, but just don't rely that people will understand the functionality based on the texts, even though they clicked on it or something. Um, they prefer to, to try out, uh, to click on stuff and uh, figure it out themselves. Um, so this is something, uh, we still have some text in the current version, but we just don't rely that they actually read it. Um, and third is some very interesting experience for us is that when we designed or started to design the first version of the game was that we were talking a lot about how can we uh, entertain um, players which meant like we talked about, okay, what kind of features do we need that it doesn't get boring? What kind of a new, um, how many new content do we need for the mini games that people um, um, yeah, stay in the game and so on. I don't want to say that this is not important, but what we found out is that it's much more important to focus on the early um, time of, or like 
on the early game um, experiences when people are not even really <coughs> engaged. So now we uh, try to design entertaining engagement, as we call it, which means um, that we want to make sure that there are um, yeah, nice game experiences already in the first 10 seconds, uh, or that, you, that we think about, okay, what can we implement that people, when they have already played for a minute, uh, play for another minute, how can we make sure that they uh, come back for a second session. Um, so this is actually before the people are engaged um, and we're focusing on the way to engage people, um, which is very interesting and, and also quite fun. And last but not least, um, if you ever try uh, if you ever try to publish or want to reach an international audience, don't uh, call your name Spitzeljagd, as we did. Um, it's a nice name if you are German and if you can pronounce it, but once we talked to international investors and international publishers, uh, they, couldn't, yeah, they couldn't spell it, they couldn't remember it, and they couldn't pronounce it. Um, so this was the, the first obstacle that we actually had to overcome, and this is why we, re we renamed and rebranded the game uh, quite fast from Spitzeljagd to Spidey Essence. Spitzeljagd? Yeah, see? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a uh, spy hunt or something. Scar uh -huh. Scar yes, yeah. The joke station. Scavenger? Scavenger. Yeah. Um, um, that's it. Um, so thanks for listening. I hope I didn't uh, put 10 minutes <laughs> Um, the question was if it's available all over Germany or only in the major cities. Um, we started in Berlin, um, but now we publish all over Germany. Um, so it's at every bus stop, every single bus stop, every train station all over Germany. Yeah. Yeah. The, the question was uh, basically uh, if we did any math or any uh, market analysis before we started the game because we have such a... I mean, you didn't Germany. say it, but it's kind of a narrow audience. Is it with the smartphone, it's, I mean, it's a mobile game, so this is obviously the target audience. Um, that it's only Germany right now, it's not that we only want to focus on Germany. Yeah. Um, the reason why we started in Berlin was we just wanted to test the concept so that we didn't put any effort in, in you know, scaling it. Uh, right now we're trying, I mean, we are in contact with publishers for other countries, um, so we, we're not, we don't want to stick to Germany. Um, we didn't do any math in the beginning. Um, we, we, when we started to develop the game, it was, as I said, we were focusing on developing something that is fun while exploring the city or something. Um, the question was, what is like which company we're targeting? Oh, which country? country. Yeah, which, which country? country? Yeah. Um, it depends. As I said, we are in contact with publishers. It basically depends um, what they think. Um, they did the, They know the markets better, so it depends where we get the audience. Um, Okay, thank you.